here I have a late 2012 Mac Mini that needs to be reset. Did you know that there are three ways to do this without using a USB thumb drive? Well, let's explore those three options and go through the steps of resetting this Mac and reinstalling Mac OS. This is what's next. This is a first of two parts in resetting a Mac Mini. Today we're focusing on that reinstalling of Mac OS, the last version that is compatible with the system. But primarily there are three ways to reset and I wanted to just kind of walk through this with you all so you get an idea of how to do this for Intel based Macs. Let's just look at the Mac Mini 2012 real quick. This one here has the power supply, Ethernet, Firewire 800, HDMI, DisplayPort, four USB 3 ports, then we have the SD card slot, and then two audio connections. The other nice thing about this unit is twist this off and the whole back comes off and you have instant access to your memory. That was one of the great things about the Mac Mini. Uh, this style, at least prior to 2014 when they stopped doing it, and then the 2018, uh, they went back and allowed you to access at least the memory. We have this Mac Mini here, and I was trying to look through the Apple documentation in regards to resetting, and I was kind of surprised that there were three ways to do this, and I don't know if everyone's aware of it. Maybe you are, and you'll find this just interesting. Otherwise, if you're not familiar with resetting a Mac, let's discuss those right now. So why would we want to reset a Mac Mini? Uh, maybe you want to sell or donate it. Um, obviously you do have the option of recycling it, but if selling it, donate it, or maybe you repurchased one off of eBay recently or Facebook Marketplace and you're really just not sure what is on this system. So to play it safe, I think the best way is just to go ahead and reset your Mac. Uh, it's a great way to start from the beginning. Now, these instructions are for Intel based Macs only and uh, prior to Mac OS 12, I think that's the Monterey, you do have an option of doing a reset within the control panel, but prior operating systems in this one especially, uh, 1015 was the last one that was compatible with this you don't have that option, so you have to do a reset. So let's discuss the three options. And also note, these instructions do not work with Apple Silicon Max. That's a whole nother thing that maybe we could explore in another video. So the first item is you can use Command-R. Uh, this will start the local recovery system and you get whatever the current version of the operating system that is installed on this unit option command r that allows you to start up from internet recovery we'll show this process and you should get the latest or the last mac operating system that was compatible for your mac now the last one, and this is the one that maybe you're not familiar with, and I really wasn't either, was Shift Option Command R. And this again will get you into internet recovery mode. And what you'll end up getting, if it's available online, is the Mac operating system that came with the unit initially when it was sold. Those are the three options, and those are what we're going to cover first we're going to start with shift option command R. We now have our Mac mini is running. This is the last operating system. Let's see here that was supported and it was Mac OS Catalina. This was my dad's Mac mini. So I really don't want his information on here anymore. Hence the reason for the reset. So, because I've already backed it up. What we're going to do is we're going to do the most difficult and it's the finger gymnastics that we have to do on the keyboard that's going to be shift option command and r we're going to try to do that without blocking too much of the screen here and what we need to do is you got to restart your mac so let's go apple restart yes restart and we're going to wait for the screen to go black shift option command r 
Now, we should get a globe here in a moment. And if you're connected via Ethernet, it should just automatically work. If you have a Wi-Fi connection, there is a potential of you needing to add your Wi-Fi information. Well, there we go. This is now booting off the internet. This is going to be the operating system that came with this Mac. So I'm gonna give this about eight to nine minutes to boot up and let's see how that process works. We're getting a mouse alert warning. So we're gonna try to see if we can reconnect. Otherwise it may have to use another keyboard. By the way, it took about four minutes to get to this screen. So we're gonna see Yep, it lost the Bluetooth connection for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get a, another keyboard connected to this real quick. All right, if you are working on computers, this Logitech, I believe it is the K400 Plus, love it. It has the USB dongle on the back, your built-in trackpad, keyboard. And generally when I'm working on computers and I run into that Bluetooth problem, this always saves the day. Anyways, so here we go. We have our OS 10 utilities, but I believe we're gonna see which version of Mac this is, Mac OS. It's Mountain Lion, so that's going way back to 10.8. All right, well, what would you do at this point? Uh, basically, what you would end up doing is you could just reinstall Mac OS 10, but again, to secure the hard drive, I would probably go to Disk Utility and then I would select continue. And then at that point, you would find your drive and we would just go to erase. So I've gone ahead and I've selected the erase tab and we're going to, I keep trying to use my mouse over here. That's not working. I'm going to select erase and erase. So we now know that this disk will not have any information on it. And so there we go. And we would then go and install Mountain Lion. So let's go ahead and let's try Option Command R next. With the computer shut down, we've erased the drive. It is now time to try the Option Command R functions to boot up into internet recovery mode so that we can install the latest or the last operating system supported for this Mac mini. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna press the power on the back, Windows Alt R, because again, we have a Windows keyboard right now, and we should get that globe again. And there we are. All right, we'll be back in just a few moments after the boot up. And there's our Mac OS utility screen. This should be Catalina. Let's double check. And it is, which is the last or latest Mac OS that is compatible with this Mac Mini. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click Continue. We'll get our agreement screen that comes up. I'm going to select Agree, Agree, select the drive. And I'm going to go ahead and get this installed. And let's see how long it takes. And after 30 minutes, we now have a fresh copy of Mac OS Catalina installed on this Mac mini. And we are now presented with a welcome screen for Mac OS Catalina. You can do a couple things at this point. You could shut down the Mac, uh, which then anybody that would purchase it, or if you were donating it, they would start off at this screen. They could set up the Mac, or you could go ahead and set it up for them using some just generic information. Um, so then that way they could log in and then add their info. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can use the command R function to boot into the local recovery system. So we're going to use again the Logitech keyboard because I don't have the Bluetooth connected. So let me go ahead and I'm going to shut down this computer and we're going to just do a restart and then try command R. Holding the power button for five seconds. And we're going to start. And now we're doing Windows R on the Windows keyboard, but again, we would be doing Command R. This should get us into the boot up for recovery mode, but now we're doing it locally as opposed to through the internet. 
and there you go. And the only reason you're gonna know that you're in the recovery mode is this takes forever <laughs> to come across the screen. Give it a moment, we're gonna see what happens at this point. And now we are in the recovery mode and you're gonna notice that the Mac OS Utilities looks exactly like the one that we did for Windows Alt R or Command Option R. And that's the last of the three reset options for Mac OS installation. Let's take it back to the studio for my final thoughts. You might be asking why do a video on this topic with this Mac Mini? Well, many viewers probably already know about these shortcut keys, but there are many who don't. And a quick refresher for me wasn't a bad thing, so I thought sharing this topic would be a good idea and maybe help someone along the way, you know, getting their Mac Mini reset. I think I already know what some of you are going to ask next. Why would you even install an old Mac OS? Well, for my dad, he needed a computer to do basic tasks, and this solution, this Mac Mini right here, worked for him. Yeah, I could have installed OpenCore Legacy Patcher, while a solution, just in my opinion, would have been too much for him to handle. At this point, Catalina hasn't received an update in three years, so using this Mac Mini as an internet device is not the best solution for security. Uh, it's fine for offline work, like basic video editing, like with iMovie and Office applications, or maybe older games, but I'd say that's where it stops. If I want to continue using this Mac Mini, well, this one right here again, <laughs> the next obvious choice would be, wait for it, a Linux distro, which so happens to be next week's topic. So how's that? Uh, so until then, that's a wrap for today. Thanks for watching. If you like today's content, can you give me a thumbs up? Uh, it's greatly appreciated. And to stay current on future episodes, click the subscribe and bell notification icons. In the meantime, feel free to watch one of my other videos either here or here. And until next time, I'll see you again for another episode of Hey, What's Next?